talk now about HALU. We know what uranium ore is. That's what we dig out of the ground. And you got this conversion process. There's this enrichment process to make it usable. You said HALU is high assay, low enriched uranium. So what is HALU as it relates to SMR? Is that the input at the end of this process they use to generate energy? Yeah. But putting gasoline in your car, the gasoline makes the car go. The HALU is the fuel that powers the nuclear reactor. And so a traditional nuclear reactor, a large pressure water reactor, typically uses low enriched uranium. That's enriched up to 5%. When you dig uranium out of the ground, it contains 0.71% of the 235 isotope. Traditional reactors enrich that to 35 to 5%, and we call that low enriched uranium. And what these, most of these SMRs need is, is more enrichment to 19.75%. Your energy density per kilo is much, much greater. Right. Means really you can't produce HALU in a plant that produces LAU. They're not, not licensed. Right. So uranium ore, less than 1% enrichment. Traditional enrichment processes, really your competitors, enrich to call it a 5% standard. And then your technology, which we described earlier enriches to a 19% standard, which is required to make these SMRs viable by delivering a higher energy density. Yeah. So actually, we have two technologies for uranium. We're actually hoping to use a different technology for uranium. So we use the spinning vertical tube, the vortex, the ASP process for elements or the molecules that are easy to convert into a gas. Not everything converts into a gas. And so for that, we have a laser-based approach called quantum enrichment. And in, in that approach, we, we vaporize the metal, pass it through a laser, and that laser basically charges one of the isotopes. We can select that and pick, select and pick that isotope out of the mixture by using a charged plate. So we're building our first quantum enrichment plant right now in South Africa. That'll enrich your turkey in 176. That's just where we use for Halion. The beauty about quantum enrichment, in our view, is that we've got an exceptional amount of enrichment per stage really strong efficacy. And so that we believe that will allow us to take other people depleted waste and convert that into HALU in a single step. And that will really change cost dynamics for, for HALU. So depleted waste, by this you mean you've got these barrels of spent uranium. It might be the output of material that was used by a nuclear reactor or nuclear weapons. We're not that type of nuclear waste. There's two types of nuclear waste. There's nuclear waste that's come out of a nuclear reactor, and that typically contains lots of long-lived, very dirty isotopes that you have to basically bury under the ground some distance below the surface. The other type of nuclear waste is the stuff that comes out of other enrichment facilities. When I'm enriching someone, Urenco or whoever is enriching LEU, they buy their uranium at 0.71%. Maybe they put six metric tons of that in, into an enrichment facility, they get one metric ton of LEU and they get five metric tons of waste. And that waste contains uranium at, say, 0.3%, and we call that depleted tails. In Ohio, there's close to 900,000 metric tons of depleted uranium sitting there in large 20 ton vessels. The same is true in Kappenhurst and Western in the UK, then is true in France, then is true in Russia. And no one really knows how to get rid of these depleted tails right now. They've been sitting there for decades. And yet you know, we can take those tails and re enrich them back up to 19.75% using our process. That will really change the operating cost and the cost of production of HALU. Got it. There's an ESG story here. There's getting more energy out of spent energy that you can get after. So you have two technologies one that works today, looking to commercialize in the short term with these uh, agreements with an industrial gas consumer and a semiconductor consumer. And then you got this new technology that you're looking to test, which will allow more efficient one-step, shorter number of stages to enrich the uranium and other isotopes. Come on. Your turkey is a very interesting isotope in its own right. In Nevada, I've launched a new drug of radio therapeutic, and that needs a radio isotope called lutetium-177. And it's very hard to produce lutetium-177, but... Utopium 176 is the best starting point to produce that. It's close to $35,000 a gram. So we're hoping to get our plant up to enrich Utopium and start supplying Utopium to the market. And if you look at the Martyrs clinical trial, 5% of patients died because you couldn't get the drug, you couldn't make the drug. Today, it's like a two month waiting list to get the drug. So huge shortages of these radioisotopes and stable isotopes we're hoping to solve. 